the Vesper model. The Vesper model is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. So that's a really long theory to name, so we shorten it by using the first letter of every word here, valence shell electron pair repulsion, to become the Vesper theory. The Vesper theory is based on the fact that atoms in a molecule are arranged as far as possible because their electron orbital, their electrons orbitals for lone pairs and bonds repel each other. So they repel each other. They don't want to be close to each other. The Vesper theory thus predicts these specific arrangements of atoms in a molecule based on electron repulsion. So these arrangements or shapes are predicted by the electron repulsion. So electrons don't like to be close to each other. That's a fact. They have the same charge. So this case one is very unfavorable. So the electrons are very sad. However, when we have these electrons, when case two is favorable because they're moving away from each other. They don't want to be close to each other so they move away. So now they're very happy. The case two is very favorable for them. So what we're going to go through is look at how we can predict these specific arrangements based on electron repulsion. So we have a system to kind of think about and understand how these, how we can predict the shape or arrangement of, a, of atoms in a molecule. So we have some examples here. If something has zero lone pairs, lone pairs of electrons, meaning a dot dot in its Lewis structure, so kind of like this one, if it has none of those and two bonds, it is most likely going to form a linear, it's going to, it's going to have a linear shape, or molecular geometry, we call it. Or, and that means the bond angle is 180. And if you know the angle of a line is 180 degrees. So here, 180 degrees is that bond angle. So BE, you're going to notice that BE has kind of a separate, a, is an exception to the octet rule because it only has two hydrogens bonded to it. So this is one of these exceptions to the octet rule. But it only has two hydrogens, so those orbitals want to be as far apart from each other as possible, and the best way for them to do that is to be at 180 degrees apart. The next one is zero lone pairs, but three bonds. We call this trigonal planar. That means the bond angles are 120 degrees. So when they, we have 120 degrees, this is because we want to make sure that these three bonds are as far apart from each other. So 120 degrees, if we add that up, is going to be 360 degrees, and that's a circle. So imagine like a circular shape. So these shapes right here are 120 degrees apart from each other because that's the furthest apart in a circle shape that they can be. And planar means like if I drew that circle on top of a page of paper, it would just be flat on that piece of paper. So that's why we call it trigonal, because it kind of has a tri, uh, triangle shape, because it has three bonds, and planar, because it would lie flat on a piece of paper. Lone pairs, we have one lone pair. When we have one lone pair and two bonds, we call that a bent shape. So the bond angle here is a little bit different, because this lone pair is acting differently than a bond would but it's still doing this kind of shape. We call it bent because we want to acknowledge that it is, it has one lone pair and the bond angle is different. So next we have zero lone pairs and four bonds, we call that tetrahedral. And all of the bonds here have 109.5 degree separation. Here, what we need to notice is that this is kind of three-dimensional. Tetrahedral, tetra, tetra is a a prefix that means four, so this represents four, this tetra means four, so that can help you with the number of bonds. And what we can see here is that it has these four bonds. What, what it's doing is it has one on the top, and then notice it has kind of a pyramid on the bottom. It has an H here, an H coming out at us, and an H behind. So those that represents it. They represent it with a shading here to show you that there's a kind of a pyramid under the C, and there's a hydrogen atom on the top. So CH4 has a shape 
a tetrahedral shape. Now, if you have one lone pair and three bonds, it kind of looks like a tetrahedral shape, but we call it a trigonal pyramidal because it has a pyramid that's kind of triangular at the bottom, but it has a lone pair floating at the top, and this changes the bond angle. Now, if you have two lone pairs and two bonds, this bend shape is going to be even more different. Notice that these lone pairs down here, we have down here, and we have two bonds here. So it has a bench shape. Notice there are two types of bench shapes, so you have to be very careful to identify which one you're talking about. The, the one with one lone pair and two bonds, or the one with two bonds and two bonds and two lone pairs. Next we have zero lone pairs and five bonds. We call this trigonal bipyramidal because it has three separate bond angles that are based 90 degrees as you can see here 180 degrees and 120 degrees so that it can accommodate and repel repel everyone and still have enough room to breathe so it's kind of a three-dimensional shape you have to imagine these shaded lines coming out at you and being in a pyramid kind of shape lone pairs we have one lone pair here and four bonds so still kind of five still kind of similar shape because we have those same bond angles, but notice that he, instead of another atom here, we have a lone pair. Here we have two lone pairs and three bonds, T-shaped. T-shaped, so T, okay, notice that it's kind of a T-shape here. We have T, if I drew that there, it would be like a T, and then these are the lone pairs that are floating around it. It only has 90 degree and 100 degree angle, so here we can see it has a 180 degree angle, and here we can see that it has a 90 degree angle. Three lone pairs and then two bonds is linear. Notice that it's kind of the same shape. So notice these are like in the same family, but they have different shapes. They call them different shapes depending on how many atoms are surrounding the central atoms and how many lone pairs. So this is kind of like this trigonal bipyramidal shape, except it only has two atoms. So when we're counting the distance between the atoms or the angle between the atoms, we know it's 180 degrees like the other linear shape because it only has those two atoms. Those two atoms are going to be as far apart, those bonds are going to be as far apart as possible. Lastly, we have this kind of family here. We have when it, when it has zero lone pairs and all six bonds, it's octahedral, 90 degrees and 100 degrees. So there's a, some 90 degree bonds here and 180 degree bonds that separate out the atoms. So we got a 180 degree bond here and some 90 degree bonds. So imagine an octahedral shape having an F coming at us, these two F's coming at us, the two F's on the back end, and then an F on the top and an F on the bottom. Here if you only have one lone pair and five bonds, we call it a square by a pyramidal. So here we can draw kind of like a square box here, okay, a kind of square box. Um, and it's pyramidal because it has this kind of shape here based on based on being if I were to draw something like this like a pyramid I could draw a pyramid here so it has a square pyramidal shape the next one we have is two lone pairs and four bonds we call that square planar notice that this is kind of just in one plane if I were to lay a sheet of paper between these lone pairs here that would be the plane that I'm talking about, and it's a square on that plane. So that, again, has a 90 degree and 180 degree bond angles. So based on all this information, the number of lone pairs, the number of bonds, and potentially the bond angles, you can tell the molecular geometry or shape of a molecule.